When to quit and when to pivot and when not to quit. Those are interesting questions. And one of the things that I see a lot is this is a tough process, this business acquisition journey. And you will meet setbacks along the way without question. If you've listened to any of my case studies of successful mentees, you will see that they're not without a struggle along the way. Matter of fact, on a recent Q&A, someone said, I was listening to the Jim podcast and are all these business acquisition journeys this stressful? I said, yeah, pretty much they actually are. But one of the things that's important is, and front and center, is mindset. Last week I did a three email series on mindset. If you haven't gone and read those, I would encourage you to do that. It was uh, basically covered why is it important, which hopefully you know, five ways that your mindset can sabotage you, and then three things you can do immediately to fix your mindset and keep moving forward. So those were different. They were longer emails, and I'd encourage you to go look at those. But that said, one of the things that you can do with respect to mindset and deciding how this is working or how it's not working is to keep a journal or a timeline of those things that you have accomplished. Oftentimes someone says to me, you know, I've made a lot of cold calls, but none of them have turned out to be any good. I, I didn't see any financials that worked, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And at some point they think about, well, should I pivot? Well, maybe you should pivot, and that can be uh, the subject of the emails coming out this week on industry, how to pick it, how to know if you're on the right track, that sort of thing. But in terms of just looking at the circumstances and deciding what you should do, also think about how far you've come. And I would encourage you to keep a timeline talking about where you picked your industry and when and why you did, write your why down, then how you built your team, how you ended up getting professionals on a success-oriented fee basis. Again, don't use the word success with accounting firms. How you successfully got banks to say, yeah, we'd be interested in doing this deal. And then depending upon where you are, the amount of people that you've talked to, and if you've closed a deal, sometimes even if you've closed a deal, you can run into problems with a deal that makes you wonder whether or not this is something to continue with. But oftentimes people, once they complete an action, they forget about it. And I'm not telling you to dwell on the past, but I am telling you to think about what you've accomplished that you thought you probably could not have accomplished. And that oftentimes is enough to have somebody say, yeah, this is a tough patch I'm going through, but you know what? It was tough to get that board. It was tough to get those professionals. And guess what? I did that. And keeping that front and center in your mind gives you the ability to say, okay, I can get through this. I've gotten through these things before, so I'm going to keep pushing. I hope that's helpful. And I hope if you are on a fence that you at least take the time to go through that process of remembering what you've accomplished. Uh, if you are looking at what to do and how to do it, go over to brucewhipple.com. The all-new Deep Dive Boot Camp is the best source I have for the steps, templates, scripts, etc. There's uh, courses on mindset. There's free material. But know what the steps are. Know how to do them. Know why this is important to you. The why is really, really critical to this uh, so that when you hit those tough times, you'll continue to push forward.